Thank you. Thank you for having me this afternoon. I know it's right after lunch on a muggy day in a dark room that's nice and cool. That's also <laughs> called nap time, isn't it? All right, I know, I know. And that's okay, because we all need a little relaxing time. I know you've got a handout in front of you, and I'm gonna tell you that's for you to take back with you. Don't use it as a cheat sheet as we go, because I'm gonna ask you guys a lot of questions that I would rather have you think about than see what I thought about. You'll get that, but I want you to think about it first. Our topic for today is overcoming negativity. Now, first off, You've never experienced any negativity in the workplace, have you? None, none whatsoever. So no matter what our perceptions of negativity are, I want us to know a few things up front. You will not be granted a magic wand at the end of today's meeting that will automatically allow you to change someone over. We're not going to go that far with it. What we hope we're going to do, because we can't change other people, can we? Can we? As hard as we try. Come on, how many of us have, have beaten our heads against that wall before? We cannot change other people. We cannot do that. So that's not really our goal. But it's to talk about how can we address maybe a little bit more positive solutions to dealing with negativity in the workplace. Is that fair? So no magic wands, but we're going to be realistic. And you do get a nice cushy seat in a dark room in a cool seat so that, in a cool room. So that's good. So you can tell the imagery that Arthur and I picked for this presentation because this was at least our view of negativity, that it's stormy. It's like kudzu. <laughs> it can take over. <laughs> it's turbulent sometimes. Are those fair words when we think about negativity? I think so. But, but one of our goals is we talk about overcoming, and the emphasis is on overcoming, not on poof, making that person go away. Overcoming negativity is to try to calm those turbulent waters a bit, try to find a little more peace, a little more serenity, and yeah, there's still some clouds in that sky if they don't look quite as ominous. And so that's kind of our goal as we think about overcoming negativity in the workplace today. So as we think about negativity, Daryl asked me to think about some specific things, and, and he asked me to acknowledge that, you know what? And I know many of you in this room, and some of y'all seriously are on my list as absolute saints, but even sometimes as saints, do we have a little hint of negativity in ourselves? Of course we do. I think that's human. I think that's realistic. We're not asking anybody to be perfect, but this is a good opportunity to think about when we are negative, can we limit it? Can we get it to a manageable amount? And then what can we learn to do to deal with those other people who perhaps don't want to put the constraints on it so much? And so we're trying to look at shaping our own attitudes to be a bit more positive look at our own behaviors and how do we address negative behaviors in the workplace. Does that sound fair? That's where we're going today. All right. Maybe I assumed and maybe I should have asked you first, where does negativity come from in the workplace? And I've already jumped on out there, haven't I, and told you what I assume. It's not always co-workers, but is this a fair source of negativity in the workplace? Other people we deal with. Yeah. Yeah, and we can talk about some other things that are negative, too, in our situation, in our context. But one of the most complicated things I think that we deal with is other people. And, and this is where a lot of negativity comes into our workplace. So I want you to think about it a minute, and you have to take an oath here. <laughs> Everything stays in our heads, in our individual heads. We don't name names. We don't just give a description where somebody goes, oh, I know exactly who you're talking about. We're not going to do that. But I do want you to get a mental image or two in your head of somebody that you've dealt with who's frequently negative. Sorry about that, Patrick. Frequently negative. Not negative that one or two times. We all have that. That's fair, isn't it? We all get to have a bad day now and then. We don't get to be awful, but we get to have a bad day, right? That's not who we're talking about. I want you to get kind of in your head these negative coworkers that are frequently negative. Frequently. Again, no names, no description that we can guess who you're thinking about even. All right, and I want us to think about what it is those employees do that makes you think they're negative. So what is a, how does a negative coworker behave? And again, nothing that we could guess who you're thinking about. How, I want to hear from you guys. How does a negative, they do what? They complain. I heard the, the big complain word that a trait of a highly negative coworker, and again, do we all complain a little bit? Yes, but we're going to talk about someone who's got a regular pattern, they do it all the time, that's kind of their, their primary nature, they're known as the big complainer. Okay, so they complain. What other behaviors do negative coworkers typically portray? 
the cackling hen, oh no, okay, the cackling hen, does that mean they're loud or they're just joking or, oh, wait a minute, okay, so that cackling was attached to the, to another word of gossip, Uh uh-huh, so we've got complaining, cackling, gossiping, drama, yes, Uh uh-huh, and with a capital D, right, not little d, ha, 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 drama, what else would we put up there? Yes? The one that if there's something good happening, they put a negative spin on it immediately. Karen, that's a good point, that they can rain on your parade, right? When something good happens or something okay happens, they can still find a way to be critical of it. Okay, I think that's very fair descriptor. What else? View every change as something that's going to be disastrous. I like that. That is so true. Change is a disaster. All change, right? <laughs> Oh, oh, that, that is a, just a trouble thunderstorm waiting to happen, isn't it? That we really mix up too much personal life and too much work. And do we all bring a little bit of personal life to work? Well, yeah, but when it starts to really take over, when it becomes the number one priority all the time and, and, and outweighs work at work, ooh, that can get a little difficult, can't it? Mm-hmm. So we start to see negative coworker behaviors. Anybody want to add any, anything else on our negative? Yes. Puts up barriers. Yeah, Dr. Keith said negative people behave in a way that puts up barriers. That could be related to some of that change stuff. I don't want to. That's wrong. It could be related to some of what Karen talked about, about I'm going to rain on your parade no matter what. You just won this award. Well, so what? That's not this award. You did not win the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> Therefore, whatever you did pales in comparison. Yes, we see those people. Yes. Ooh, isn't that the truth? Is that kind of the philosophy? That should be on the T-shirt of the negative coworker. My name is Misery, and I'm looking for you. Yes, I want you to go with me. I, that's true. I think that's a that's a good char- a good descriptor of a characteristic of a negative coworker. The minute they get out of the car in the morning, they are hating everything about being here. Their job, their presence, the way the everything's wrong. Yeah. Uh, yes, the sigh. What else have we got? We got it? Yes. Oh, contrasted to Dr. Keith's approach of that negative person who it, nothing you can do is good enough. We've got another characteristic of a negative person who they're going to take credit for what you did well. You ever seen that? And again, we don't mean that one slip up where maybe they didn't intend to or maybe they just said something like, we're not, we're not talking about these times that this happens once. We all can kind of make mistakes, pick wrong words that just come out of our mouth. We're talking about patterns here, aren't we? That's what we mean with negative coworkers. All right, so we have got our long list of negative behaviors. Here was my list that I started with, and let's see, we kind of got it all matched up, don't we? We're going to complain, we're going to criticize, we're going to gossip, we're going to create drama hit people against each other. Oh, do you know what she said about you? Uh-huh, that's it, isn't it? And, and I, I picked number seven carefully because I was not wanting to use the L word, but sometimes they just spin things differently than maybe that it was intended or they see it differently. And y'all said takes credit for your work, so we're kind of aligned in our thinking on who these people are. Now what I want you to think about for a minute is how does that negative coworker's behavior impact you and others in your workplace? If they're doing these things, and again, not that one bad day you came in, you're complaining, I couldn't get a parking place. We all do that. But this is who they are kind of all the time. What does it do to your workplace? Yes? It creates a negative environment. Ooh, like kudzu, doesn't it? <laughs> Does it spread? I like to say like fire ants, because you can tell I grew up in rural Alabama. Fire, it spreads like fire ants, doesn't it? And it stings about that bad, too. And it leaves a whelp. <laughs> and it irritates you for days, <laughs> doesn't it? Uh-huh. How else would you describe that negative coworker behavior? Why does it affect your workplace? It is it, it does. I mean, y'all talked about a lot of things when I asked you about their behaviors, and you said they're negative against change, they put up barriers to doing things differently or considering things differently, and it does present, prevent progress. I mean, this uh, negativity, this is dumb, this is stupid, I hate it, and now I'm going to go tell you guys I want you to hate it too. Uh, 
now we start to pre pre prevent progress. How often does this negativity affect your workplace? It destroys the team. Will a team really work with this going on? Not all of this. Everybody knows, again, you have that down day, you have that day you're down on yourself or you're down on us. That's different. But this won't work. It, it's just it's incredibly destructive. And I want you to think about some of the things that it can cause to happen to work getting done. We're going to lose our focus because now Patrick and I are going to have to get together and spend all this time talking about something that somebody else brought up, some other issue we didn't even know we had. Can that negative coworker create hard feelings among each other? And I want you to keep in mind, we're not talking about two people who disagree on an idea that uh, Jacob thinks this is the way to get something done, and I'm thinking this is the way to get it done. That's fine. That's normal. Because we're both trying to think about good ways to get things done. We just see it from a different angle. That's not what we're talking about, are we? We're talking about more that kudzu firing effect. Create suspicion. Is that true? Can negativity create? Oh, well, no. I don't know about Leslie. Right? Can we do that? Yes. Yeah. Does it kind of drag us down? When we get that negativity in the workplace. Is it distracting? And one of my biggest complaints, see now I'm going to, just, I'm going to be a complainer here. But one of my biggest complaints is that it's not solution oriented. If Jacob and I disagree on the, way, the best way to do something, that's fine. We're both trying to find a solution. We just see it from a different viewpoint. That's good, that's healthy, that's constructive. But that's not what Dr. Keith described as somebody just standing back and saying, well, that's dumb, that's stupid, that's ridiculous. You can't do that. That'll fail because there is no solution to it. We can say I, that idea may not work because X, Y, Z, but if we're not a negative coworker, we're going to follow it with what? But we should, if we try this, I think it might work. That's not negativity. That's thinking. That's being constructive. And that's being solution-oriented. It's OK to disagree. That's actually very healthy. But what we're talking about with negative coverage is not solution-oriented. No, uh that's not going to work. And I'm not going to do anything, right? We know the body language that goes with it, too. How does a negative coworker, that kind of behavior that we've described over here, how does it cause more work? Well, when they refuse to find a solution, somebody has to. Exactly. You've just basically had a team member sit back and say, that's stupid, that won't work, and there's no solution forthcoming, so somebody's got to find it. And they've got to overcome that negativity, kind of that poison pill that's been planted, and find an actual solution. You've just made it harder. And doesn't it just make work unpleasant? We spend a lot of time here, don't we? <laughs> and I look at people in this audience who've been here a very, very long time, and I know some of you are here strictly because you love it. Yes, it's a great job, and we all need to be employed, and we need an income, and those are good things, but I know you have other choices too. You're here because you have a connection. You have a commitment. And it's pretty bad when that kind of gets poisoned. It's very unpleasant. So when we think about the negative coworker behavior, the implications on our work, this is quite the negative tide to overcome. It's hard if this becomes prevalent. Okay, I didn't say that I couldn't be sarcastic up here, so I'm sarcastic. This is our summary of kind of the negative coworker and some of the traits that he or she might have that we've kind of discussed today. Now, does a negative coworker have to have all of these to be kind of classified as that negative coworker? No, uh-uh, no, it's some mix of some of these. But this is kind of what they sometimes live for, right? And we can also get collections of these traits. We said no one person has all of these, let's hope not. <laughs> that would be <laughs> very difficult. But we can get collections of these traits that start to look like patterns. Can we not? Let me give you some examples, and I'm sure there's lots more, but let me give you some examples of collections of these traits. See if you've ever met this person, and we're not naming them. We are not. The person whose negative coworker type is they're the attacker. This is the person who gets everything done with anger, with frustration, and they're going to take people and really put them down. 
And you got to separate this from people who deal with things constructively. We all need constructive criticism. But the difference is that's somebody who sits us down and says, look, I need to talk to you about this. I think you can really improve on X, Y, Z. Here's some ways to do it. That's not what we're talking about with the attacker. That's constructive. That's somebody seeing some of our weaknesses, which we all have, trying to give us constructive feedback and opportunities to improve it. That's, that's what work is about. That's good employee management. But look at what the attacker does. Uh-uh, it's personal. It's more to tear you down, isn't it? Do we see that difference? It's more about tearing you down. Have we ever met this person? Don't name them. Yes. All right, what about the manipulator up there? We're talking about collections of negative coworker traits. This is that person whose typical approach to kind of get under your skin is through using deception and secrecy. How does that work? Well, you know, it works like, I'm going to tell Patrick, well, Patrick, I heard some people talking and they kind of said, now I'm being very secretive and you don't know where it came from and I'm not being forthright. And again, is it really to help you grow, improve? No tear you down, right? Do we know people like that? Do we know the, the manipulator profile? They've always got something to tell you. Somebody said, I heard. It's this very secretive negative. Mm -hmm. uh, the bully's always a favorite, and the bully and the attacker are like first cousins. The bully is that person who's making very inappropriate demands, very high standard of demands, and they're going to threaten you to get their way, right? These are tough people. They're hard to deal with, too. And then have, uh, come on, again, no names, but we've all met the slacker, right? <laughs> you know what the slacker does as a negative coworker? This is somebody that we describe in the workplace as a shirker. And a shirker does what? Well, um, that's not really my job. Um, maybe you need to go see Carol, because I think Carol handles everything. <laughs> and and <laughs> why? And, and of course, we pass, employee, we, we pass off things to the right place. We need to do that when that's appropriate. That's different from what the shirker or slacker is, and you are laughing because you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> it's that person who's just passing the buck. They're not really trying to direct you to where you really need to go with that because that really is, say, for instance, an HR issue, and I really need you to talk to Julie or, or uh, Stephen or somebody. I'm just trying to pass the buck. We, we get this? We know these people? A little bit. We know these people. All right. So we can start to go from these individual traits that nobody hopefully is the devil and has all of those to these kind of collections of traits that represent some kind of personas we sometimes see in the workplace of negative coworkers. These are not all of them. These are just examples. Now, so far, I sound really negative. I'm describing some of your coworkers and some very <laughs> negative traits. Well, there's a reason. We work in a very large organization. We run into people from all walks of life, and that gives us rich diversity, and that's wonderful. But we know we can hit some of these negative roadblocks that describe and do what you guys described. Really stymie work, stymie success, and that's not good. Because we know that one of the biggest negative impacts of negative coworkers is the damper it puts on employee morale. We want to change our mental image here for a minute, and I want you to think back to a time where you worked in a group or on a project that was really pretty positive. And I don't mean everybody skipped and danced all the time, but they were constructive. It worked. People contributed. How did it feel when you finished whatever that was? It was like, good. You're proud of what you did. We got it accomplished. It feels good, doesn't it? versus what we know negative coworkers can do to employee morale. It's a dramatic contrast from when we work with effective coworkers who try and they're not perfect people, we don't expect them to be, and we get something done and we feel good about it, versus that damper of negativity and that drastic difference from productive coworkers to those that I, I, I have a child in college who would say, just sucks your will to live. <laughs> Do we know the difference? And then here's the worst, it can get even worse when it's not an individual, and tell me if you've ever seen this happen, that negative nucleus of a person draws other people to them. 
and they, and they create an atom. And then they form <laughs> this dynamic force. And now it's four of us, or three of us that's negative. And then what starts to happen? It really is more like an infection, isn't it? It spreads. It starts to bring down other people. It starts to cut the legs out from under those people who are positive and trying to find solutions. It can really get quite destructive. One individual's bad. Now you get a group of them. Ouch. Now we've really, really got trouble. So what are we going to do about it? So I want us to think about the behaviors of negative coworkers. Let's diagnose them a little bit. Make sure we know how it shows up. And then let's get to the positive part on solutions. How do we respond? Because we're not going to change that person. Are you going to really walk up to that person and say, Joe, let me tell you something. You're the most negative person in the world. And they're going to, oh, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Fixed tomorrow. It's not going to happen. So we've got to have some strategies on responses. Let's talk about those behaviors of our negative co coworkers. We want to think about where and how negative behavior shows up at work. And it's pretty simple. It's in going to be in some form of communication, and some people think it's always in our words, and that's a place it's going to show up. But it can be in as subtle as a look or an expression. Really? Can that convey to you some serious negativity? <laughs> there is the response to your idea. And it's not that response of like, hmm, I don't know. I mean, that's a legitimate response. This one is what? It is literally you and your idea stink. I mean, it's negative. This is not just negative to the idea. It's toward you. And that, now we've got that bully there. I'm going to tell you something. You know, the anger is there in that expression. And we all love the eye roll, do we not? And what does the eye roll say about your idea? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of, right? So we even have to watch our simplest behaviors, our expressions. Because we're communicating volumes. You knew all three of these. You knew exactly what these people were saying to you. So negativity shows up in our expressions. But of course it also shows up in our choice of words, doesn't it? We know that one. It does. And this is one of those great little uh, the qualitative analysis things on word accounts and things that shows, I mean, the words that are kind of considered the most negative in the workplace. like. You idiot, you're incompetent, you're stupid, you're weak, you're dumb, you're clueless. You're a moron. I mean, you're a liar. I mean, these are all, you know, <laughs> get them out of our vocabulary at work, right? So it keeps open our negative words. And I want us to think about, because you think, I would never say that to a coworker. And you guys wouldn't, or you, you wouldn't be here. You, you wouldn't. I mean, you wouldn't have come today because this wouldn't have interested you. But even if you wouldn't say it, would you ever use those words anywhere else? And I mean, think about it. You've got to be honest with yourself. And I think about places like social media. <laughs> those are also our words. <laughs> and no matter what screen name we have, we own them. They're ours, right? And I'll give you an example. Uh, this is a true work text. When Eva came back to her desk after a long lunch, she smelled like vodka and a vomit smoothie. I think she's drunk. Do you have any good gossip on her? And the response is, here's a bit of gossip. I'm not a drunk, and you should always double check <laughs> your recipients. <laughs> Words don't have to come out of our mouth <laughs> to be toxic, do they? And the last line didn't help either. I'm sorry, because this is not a true apology. When then you say, do you have a new perfume? I mean, <laughs> that's not an apology. Nobody's going to believe you really meant that. And so we've got to watch our expressions, both in our nonverbal communication, in our words, in things we say. And yes, it's not just in an email you send at work. It is what you say on social media, and it gets passed around. And we have to watch our general body language. We all know, and you have to think about this with yourself, what body language am I conveying in a meeting? You know, if I've got my, hand, my head down and my head in my hands, or I'm like messing up my hair or stomping, we know what that nonverbal communication says. Look, this, what does this mean? When we throw our hands in the air, does it say, I'm happy and delighted with your solution? <laughs> no, of course not. It says, what are you thinking? Fill in with those words in the top right corner. <laughs> so we've got to watch our non you know, the head down. I'm not even going to look at you. I'm going to throw my hands back. You know, you know what that says. 
So it's all the ways that we communicate that we don't like other people doing to us, and we have to watch it in ourselves. Easy. Also, because is it pretty easy to slip into some of these? I'm an eye roller. I'm a confessed eye roller. <laughs> I mean, is it pretty easy to slip into some of these? Are you kidding? It's like one of my favorite phrases. I've got to get it out of my language because it's not nice, all right? So there's some of the ways that negativity shows up at work. And we have to accept a serenity prayer here. <laughs> we do. And our serenity prayer on negative people is we can't change them. We can't. You do not have a magic wand. You don't have those powers. We can't change them. But the only thing that we can do is make better choices on our own behavior. How we react to them and what we ourselves do or don't do to kind of foster or create negativity in our own workplace. So this is about us. I know you thought, oh, we're going to fix all these negative people. It's about our reaction to them. So I want you to think for a minute. What are your best constructive tactics, not the sarcastic ones, the best constructive tactics for dealing with those negative coworkers? What do you do? And it's got to be constructive. It can't be what we all wish we could do. What do you do with these negative people? That's why you say, that's why we're all here, lady. I mean, you're supposed to be giving us some answers. What do you do? We all, you guys were like lightning on knowing who these people are and how they act. Talk with them more. Oh, I like that. Because you know what most people's normal reaction with negative people is to do what? Oh, get thee behind me, Satan, right? I mean, that's it. It, it, it is. It's, um, talk with them more. Why would that be a good tactic? Yes, yes, it gives you at least an opportunity to draw them because you can't make them go away. We don't get that magic wand. So maybe we can draw them in. Uh huh. Maybe we can help them understand a little bit. You're not going to change them, but maybe we can get them a little bit. I like that. Talk to them more. Include them rather than exclude them. Parker, I know a situation where you've got a good solution. Parker talks, and now we, now we communicate a lot in forms rather than casual conversation because it works better. We don't misunderstand each other. And it works better, doesn't it? Thank you. I just stole your idea. Give me something else that works in your tactics for dealing with extremely, yes? You can respond positively or change it into a positive. That, that's it. And that's a hard tactic because tell the truth, is it just me or do you ever want to say, I'm sick of you being negative. Stop it right now. I mean, that's what I want to come out of my mouth. But Julie's right. It's about, and, and it, there's nothing wrong with having kind of a pre-planned script. Sometimes that actually helps. When this goes negative, I know what we're here for. It's this issue, and I'm going to try to have a very positive, and I don't mean sarcastic, but I'm sorry you feel that way. Today we're really working on X. Can you help me get there? And it's hard, because I'm wanting to bite my tongue and say, you are making things so miserable, and if you just stop, it'd be a lot better, right? Those clenched teeth say something too, don't they? So all right, Julie says, let's spin it back we're not going to get happy, positive, but let's kind of reorient to what we're here for. I like that tactic. What else do you do? A lot of times it's kind of bite my tongue and ignore it, go do it, I think it's right. I think that's a great solution because what are they, at least in part, wanting you to do? Go down the rabbit hole with them, right? Go negative with them. Y'all said the T-shirt for this should be Misery Loves Company. And they're wanting you to be their company. And you're saying you have a great tactic of, I'm going to resist that. I'm not going down the negative discussion. And I'm going to try to stay on topic of what we need to be on. That's a great solution. Is it always easy to do? No, because you want to strangle them, right? OK, no. <laughs> it's not easy to do. We admit this. This is not you know, the easiest thing, Dr. Keith. Find out what they're excited about and give them responsibility to do something in that area. It is, and this one, this one's very, 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 very tricky because you don't want them to take that 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 thing that they're excited about and then turn it into, and I hate this too, right? You don't want to go do that. <laughs> but if you can find something that okay, they actually seem truly interested in X, Y, Z, that's a way to can you funnel them into that? 
maybe that will shift them some. I was a consultant for a long time and I did a lot of work with companies and one of the things I used to do on very, very negative employees, and I'll tell you, this was in the utility industry, which I thought, in hindsight, I thought, I was very young and naive because these people that I was getting them to do all this stuff could have electrocuted the world. But anyway, I, I would tell them, you get these very negative employees and they would complain and complain and complain about something. And my tactic with them was, well, I'm going to assign you to fix that. That's yours now. But this was not a university setting. I could do a lot of <laughs> other things that I couldn't do. Then. OK, all right, this is such a bad problem. This is now yours. I'll work with you on it. But you have to find a solution. You cannot just get to this is stupid. The stupid's not a solution. And so it is shifting toward, I like Dr. Keith's idea, can you find something, something that this person has a glimmer of hope about and don't let them turn it poisonous. You can try it. So let's look at a few other tactics. I put together a list from several things that I'd kind of looked around on. Some of them will work for you, some of them won't. Some of them are worth trying and some of them you can go, I could never do that. And that's okay, right? The number one tactic with negative people, and I'm not telling you to do it, is simply to avoid them. Good approach if you don't have to have anything to do with this person ever, right? Somebody you've met on the street and you don't have to have anything to do with it, walk away, right? Not my problem. But what's wrong with avoidance in our workplace? It's our work. We have to work with each other. So if we avoid people, that's not healthy. That's cutting people out. We don't want to do that. We shouldn't do that. We don't want to shun people. But if it's really somebody that your work doesn't have anything to do with, is it okay to avoid it? Yes. But if it's somebody that you need to work with, you're going to have to find a way. Work with them, right? So we don't want to cut people out. And if we cut people out, we miss out. They really do have some value somewhere. We're going to need them for something. We don't want to miss out on that. All right, this one is one I put up here hesitantly, and I'm going to put an unhappy face up here with it, too, because I'm going to tell you, this one's really hard to do. Some people claim that what you should do with the negative people, the complainers in the workplace, is you should just get in there with them. Just jump in there and say, oh, my goodness, that is indeed horrible. Join in. But what's the problem with that? You just jump in when they're complaining, too. Amen. That is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Does it, is it, does it become easy for you to become negative too? Yes. It really does. I mean, it's very easy to become negative, even when you're a very happy, positive person. And when you join in with a complainer, that's got that greater tendency for a lot of us. Some of you guys have nerves, nerves of steel, and you're better than I am. But it, it, sometimes it kind of brings us down too, and it's not a great tactic at times. So you got my unhappy face up here with it. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the join in idea and do what Dr. Keith said, kind of see if we can't turn it a little bit positive like Julie talked about. We're going to join in because we're not going to say, okay, I totally disagree with you. I think you're crazy. We're going to join in a little bit, but we're going to try to spin it back positive. So we're going to try to do something that we respond in a way that, okay, I'm going to empathize. You really do have a bad situation there, but now let's try to find a something, something positive. And again, not pretend like everything's perfect because if it is in your office, I'm coming to work with you. Right? We know there's some negative around, and that's okay. So let's try some of these tactics that kind of tend to try to shut down the pessimism without telling somebody, you are crazy, because we can't do that, and keeping, keeping going in a positive way. And here's some suggestions. I am really sorry to hear that. That's that empathetic point. And don't do this unless you mean it, because they're going to know you're faking. If you go, oh, I'm so, so sorry. I mean, they're going to know you're faking it. <laughs> But look at the next sentence. Did anything good come out of it? And you're not being Pollyanna claiming, you know, that the, the sun and the moon were in perfect alignment, but you're shifting. You, you've got that pivot back to let's get back to something constructive. I'm sorry this happened to you. Now did anything good come from it? Kind of you're trying to gently shift the conversation. Here's our empathy again. Wow, that really stinks. I'm sorry she did that to you, he did that, whatever. It really stinks. But this one, I don't think I could say with a straight face. Some people can. <laughs> I'm pretty impressed with how positive you have managed to be. I mean, only if you can really garner that with a bit of truth in your heart when you say it. What about this one? I like this one. So how do you typically handle that? 
Because what are you doing when somebody's really complaining to you? They're gossiping to you. This person did blah, 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 whatever. And you come back with, wow, how do you typically handle that? I like this one. This one works for me. How do you handle it? Well, why? What does that do to the person, the, the negative coworker that's in a conversation with you? What does it do to them? Yes, yes, it's like, you know, you just volleyed that tennis ball right back to him. You did. You just said, oh, boom, it's yours. How do you handle that? You've given the responsibility right back, put it in their lap, because they're the ones that are complaining. How do you handle that? What do you do about that? You make them own it. This one I often can't say with a straight face. The whoever they're complaining to you about, gossiping to you about, you say, well, if only Allison had the great work experience and, and attitude that you do. That would be wonderful. You can try that. It needs to be legitimate if you do it. Sometimes complainers and the negative coworker, they really do want company. They do. They want somebody to commiserate with. And that's okay. We all need that at times. We just don't want it to become all consuming, right? And if you can pull this one off and make it work, it can help sometimes, depending on the person. If you can actually say, it really sounds like you're upset because, and repeat back to them, whatever it is that's bugging you. You're really upset, I hear it, because this person is not responding to your emails, they're not getting back to you, I understand that's frustrating. And you don't want to get in gossip or anything like that, but you're just, you, you know that mirroring technique that psychologists do all the time. That's what this one is. It sounds like you're upset because. And sometimes that can be enough. Not always, and you have to be careful with this one, because then sometimes they're going to tell you everything else. But if it really is just something that's weighing on them and, and they needed somebody to hear them, when you mirror it back, it has been very clear you have heard them. It can be a helpful technique. Be careful with it. Some of these are like dynamite. I am so, so sorry that happened to you. I'm sure you'd rather talk about something happy or what's new in your world. <laughs> this is not really a subtle shift, right? This is a very dramatic one. But you're making clear your position. You're re-owning the conversation. And your conversation is, I am really sorry. And don't say I'm sorry unless you mean it, really. Because people will see through it. If you're sorry for them, say it but that you're making it, you're taking back the conversation, but I want to know something else and move it back. You don't have to let that person fully own that conversation. This one be careful with because some people will want you, to, if they're shirkers, they're going to give it to you. If you say, is there anything I can do? If they're a shirker, they're going to give it to you. If it's somebody who really does, is really extreme frustration, needs to get it off their chest, they're probably not. They're probably going to say, look, I just needed somebody to hear me out. And then, then you've done them a favor. And you kind of have to be careful in this one because honestly, are there things you don't want to know? Yeah, absolutely. So we have to be careful. But the whole point of this tip is to do what? Shift the conversation. And you don't want to dismiss. Of course, that person really is upset about something or they wouldn't be behaving the way they are. I understand you're frustrated, you're aggravated, you don't like this person. Got it. But now can we move a little bit? Can we move? And you're kind of re-owning that conversation. A few other tips to deal with our very negative people. Oh, this one really should have been tip number one. If we don't want to be, deal with negative people, we can't be the negative person ourselves. Because this is like, you know, telling the person, oh, don't you do that, but I'm going to do it, right? I mean, we have to commit to, okay, I'm not going to be the negative person either. This is kind of like the first step of the program. And we've all kind of laid it out. We have bad days. All of us complain. So we got that. Check. That happens. But we need to check our own language, our own body language, facial expressions, all those things, and say, am I starting to trend negative too? It's not just that bad day that we all have. Am I starting to start to move more negative than positive? Negativity is a choice. We all make it. And we can all choose to change our own behavior. You may not can change anybody else, but we can change our own. The more positive and grounded we are, it gets better reactions out of other people. They're going to go really negative when they know you're going to go there with them. So this one's a gut check on ourselves. And absolutely, if we want other people to be positive with us, we can't do some of those toxic things. And probably the most toxic is gossip. 
it becomes like the number one fire ant in the pile of negative work behaviors. And so we can't do it either. If we find it annoying, undercutting of our work, we can't do it either. But what if it's not a negative coworker? What if our situation really is negative? That can happen to us, can it? Something negative could have really happened. We all have that happen in our workplace. We all have crises. I mean, we have people in our offices that have dire trauma in their lives, deaths, crises, very unfortunate situations. That's different from the negative coworker, isn't it? We all have contextual things that happen to us that cause us to feel very negative. That is a perfectly normal reaction to negative situations, isn't it? And we don't need to, to pretend those things don't happen. They're part of our lives. But that's a very different thing when we're talking about a choice of, I'm just a negative, nasty person, right? So we need to be able to separate that. And I think we can do that, can't we? All right. I want to have one point on gossip because I do think it's the worst fire ant in the pile. Why do people gossip? It's just a bunch of reasons. <laughs> Some of them just do it for sport, <laughs> for boredom. <laughs> I'm kind of my work is kind of dull and boring. You know, I'm, I'm working on this banner interface for 52 hours a week. I mean, I'm just bored, right? And so we just do it for drama and for interest, and we think, okay, this will be more interesting than what my work is. It's just for sport. But there are other reasons people do it too. And it's kind of some nasty reasons to feel superior, uh, out of um, unhappiness, anger. You don't like somebody. You're undercutting them. And so we have to just watch it ourselves. How much do we do this and is it really to share? It's not, it's not gossip when we're sharing necessary information. I need you to know about X, Y, Z with this employee because it affects something that we're doing. That's not gossip. That's sharing information that's, that's critical to work. And so we have to think about those things. So let's talk about a couple of cases in action and see if we can, if we can kind of adjust our behavior to a negative coworker. I think you have the cases in front of you. You have a coworker, Chandra, and you can't stand her. <laughs> Cannot stand her. You think she's a gossip, she shirks her work, she blames others, she's lazy and whiny. You were recently given an assignment with Chandra. There's nobody named Chandra in this room, I hope, today. And, because it's not you. All right, and in one other employee, Lamar, who you don't know much about, but you think he's generally a good employee. You're going to have to work with these two other people for five weeks. You're going to have to be in meetings all the time with them on a daily basis. Is this reality for us? Does this happen to us? We get put to work with someone, somebody we really don't like. Yeah, this is daily work. So what are the negativity issues you ought to think about in this situation? You've acknowledged to yourself, I don't like her. I think she's lazy and a gossip. Yeah, you start thinking about all those kind of things, like, is she really going to show up? Is she going to do her work? Is this person going to be reliable? Those are all fair things to think about, isn't it? And is it your perception or is it your reality? And that's the question you also have to ask yourself. Is that just my perception because I really don't like her for X, Y, Z? Or is that really going to be the reality of her work? Do we need to give her the opportunity to prove herself in the work? In spite of, do you have to like her? No, 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 there's no, there's no commitment in the workplace that says you must like your coworkers. Not in a contract anywhere. <laughs> so we've got to think about some of these negativity issues. Now, but let's talk solutions. You're going to work with these two employees. One, you've got a very negative approach to because you think they've, they've demonstrated extreme negativity. So what are you going to do about it? Going to, going to give her the benefit of the doubt. Let her live up to her best potential. I think that's fair. What else can you do, Karen? You can change your own behavior. You can, you can not react to certain things. You watch how you react. And if you really, really, really believe in no, she's going to come in here and be a gossip, you have your game plan on. If that happens, I want to try to be fair, if that happens, here's what I'm going to do. We start gossiping. I mean, have your phrase already picked out in your mind. I'm going to say, what? She comes in meeting number one and it's gossip, 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 gossip. What are you going to say? We've got five weeks, we're running out of time. This is a really hard project and I've got to get it done. I've got about 20 other things on my plate. Can we focus? We're going to pivot it back. Don't go there with her. You can even say, she's gossiping about person X. You know, person X really doesn't have anything to do with this. Can we? <laughs> right? Uh, you know, can we? Do you need a strategy here if this is your situation? 
Yes, because this is set up in your mind to be a very negative situation, very negative. And if you don't plan for it to be something else, what will it become? Extremely negative. And you have to know it, recognize it, and ask yourself, all right, how am I going to react? And I love yours. I'm going to give her a chance. But if she does these three things I've seen her do before, here's what I'm going to do. Literally, have your tactics planned, right? I'm going to ask, man, I really need us to focus on this work. You're going to have to try hard to reorient this. Do you have to like her? No. None. No, not at all. Let's do one more. We got a good laugh out of the text, so let's talk about the angry text. You don't like Bo, the IT technician who would never be an employee of ITS because they're wonderful. You're the IT technician assigned to your unit. You don't like his values. You think he's a person who likes to party. He uses people. He comes to work too tired from partying. He never gets his work done. He complains. He makes excuses. He doesn't get your computer fixed. Today, he shows up at your office late to install new software. His hair's a mess. His T-shirt is torn and dirty. He's got red eyes and scratchy. And you tell him you really need the software. And he says, okay, 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 get off my back. Okay, this is going to go well, right? All right, you're furious. You put in three requests to get this software. You still don't have it. You know you can't say anything to him. He doesn't work for you. So we go to our gripe device called our cell phone, right? And we immediately group text five or six of our coworkers, and we say, Bo at my office in from a night of partying. Rick's like an old bud can stuff with cigs. Can't get my software installed because he's probably still drunk. And then you realize he's part of the group text. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the negativity issues here. This one's fraught with them. What are some of the negativity issues about Bo? What's your experience with him say? <laughs> he is unreliable from your experience, right? He doesn't get the work done. He's a shirker in your mind, and he really may be. Whew. Let's go ahead and look in the mirror and face the other negativity issues. What else has happened here? We gossiped. We did it. We can't hide it. We tried to poison the well, didn't we? We were the kudzu. We just told five other people. And the only reason we really regret it now is why? Because Bo knows. Bo knows. <laughs> And it's not Bo Jackson. That's right. Bo knows. All right. So what do you do here? He is a shirker. He's not getting your work done. What do you do here? All the times when you get you and say, I should have told you face to face. You know, that's it. And only, Karen says we've got to apologize, but only if we mean it. Only if we mean it. It's not worth the apology if you, if you don't mean it. You got to own it. You got to apologize if you mean it. And Karen put another important disclaimer on this. She said, she's going to tell Bo what, Karen? I should have told you this face to face. Because it's not that you, I mean, it's true. He's not getting your work done. But we should have dealt with it in a different way. Do you have to like him? No. no. Do you have to respect him? No. Do you need to deal with his, his work unreliableness? Yes. Either to his face or? To his boss. Is that fair? You don't want to send the group text and you don't want it to be nasty, but is it fair to say, I put in the request three times and we still haven't gotten this accomplished. What do I need to do to get this done? I mean, it's not saying you have to overlook poor performance, right? We have to overlook and get over the nasty in it, right? In this case, are we contributing to? Yes. Doesn't excuse his behavior one bit. But we just went there, too. And there's a great old saying about negative people, don't let them turn you into one of them. Is that true? And is it easy to do? They irritate you, they complain to you, they want you, and it just eats at you. And finally, what do you do? You blow up and you're nasty. How is that going to turn out? Pretty much never good. Right? Never good. And we have to think about those things. Okay, I know we're running out of time, so we're going to skip the third case, but you can take a look. You've got it in your notes on the whiner coworker, because this is one I think you're going to recognize. We'll talk about it. Let's do this one real quick. It's easy. <laughs> you have a coworker that you work really, really closely with, and she's very good at her job. She's very competent. Got it? We got who she is. But. She's also negative about others, gossipy, and complains. 
She frequently shows up at your desk to be the sounding board. She'll take an hour of your time a day to complain and whine. Do you know this person? They're good at their job. You know them. Everybody's going, yes, I know this person. Now she's really attacking the boss, Mark. And remember, she's at your desk doing this for about 30, 45 minutes, hour a day. You're not that person. You like to work. You like to get it done. And you certainly don't want your boss thinking, I'm part of this gossip about you. So what do you do? Y'all admitted you knew this person. <laughs> what do you do with them? They're a good coworker in many ways. They know how to do their job and they get it done. But they're going to mix it in with that toxicity of I'm going to complain, whine, gossip, and now I'm going to do it about our boss. What do you got to do? Who's got the nerve to tell them? Sit down and talk to them. What are you going to say to them? How do you work with this person? I mean, because you do respect their work. You got that. So how, what do you do? What are you going to tell them? Sometimes it's just when somebody is negative about someone, it's just saying something nice about the person they're talking to. Okay. There you go. You could say something positive back. Depending on who the person is, could you tell them straight up, look, I got it. You're having some problems with Mark, and I'm really, really sorry about that, but I, I don't, I don't want to discuss him. He's my boss, and I'm, I'm very uncomfortable with that. Do you need this to keep going on? This is not good. And so you got to figure out, and you, what you have to figure out is what is your reaction you're not going to change this person, and you do respect them for a lot of things, and you need to tell them that. I respect you. You're really good at this. I look up to you for this on work, but I can't go here with you. This is really uncomfortable for me. It's not who I am. This is a tough one. A lot of people experience this one. You've got to think about your reaction. All right, so what can we do to minimize the impact of negativity in the workplace? We're going to all go back, and yes, I'm included in this. We're all going to go back and pay attention to our own language, the words we choose. Are we trending negative? And if you really want to know if you are trending neg negative, look at your last few texts and ask yourself how many negative words are in there. Seriously, look back and see if you're trending toward the negative with too many negative words. It's an easy, easy thing to do, particularly on social media, but if we're doing it there, it kind of is going to spill over into our workplace behaviors as well. It's very typical to do that because it's very trendy to be negative. All right, kick the gossip habit. Even if we're only doing it a little, we need to kick it. Don't engage, don't participate. If somebody tells you something that's surely gossip, it's not information you need about a person to get your work done. We all have those needs. But if it's just sheer gossip, just don't participate. Don't. You don't have to engage. Oh, tell me more. You don't. You do not have to participate. Don't encourage. Silence is, you know, it makes people tend to be uncomfortable. No matter how frustrating, don't let the negative people turn you into one of them, and they're the ones that are most likely to turn us negative because they're going to irritate us the most. Don't let them do it. And you become the positive force. And watch your own body language. You know, I, I realize sometimes, I don't think I've smiled in like 28 days, right? I mean, come on. You, then you know things are too negative. You've got to find something joyful, something that you can focus on that you feel good about. And this was a little thing I found from a company newsletter years ago that I really liked. It was from just a little tiny, simple, simple company newsletter. And it's like, be the positive force. And I think it was things that we generally learned back in kindergarten. Really, I do. Think before you speak or use our phones, right? Think before you speak. Keep an open mind. You guys said one of the worst things about negative people is they shut down. They were a barrier. So we don't need to do that either. Discuss rather than argue. Jacob and I can disagree and not be in an argument. We both think we've got to achieve this and we're going to do it. We've got three different ideas on how to get there. That's not negative. We're discussing. Cultivate a soothing voice. I have to I'm a very energetic, emotional person. I like, woo, I like highs, but then I'm going to go, oh, you. And it's like, work on the soothing voice. Really? I'm going to work on having this very calm tone at work. It'll make you feel better, too. Because we know when we get excited, we get excited. Ramp it down. Um, <laughs> never lose an opportunity to praise or say a kind word. Not in a fake way, but when somebody's done something, we're going to call them out in a positive way on it. Can I call somebody out in this room? 
Dean Jason Keats in the back of the room, and he does the best job of sending out notes, I know, to our office, to other people, telling, some, telling us something a student has done, a staff member, a faculty member has done. And it's like these little bubbles of joy in the day, and you go, wow, that is cool. That is awesome. Even if you don't even have time to even respond, it's just this like, wow, huh. For once, it wasn't an email that had a problem in it. <laughs> yes, I mean, it's like, wow, that is such a nice thing. And a couple of other those points I want us to make, respect the feelings of others, uh, refuse to discuss the shortcomings of others. Now, if we're doing a performance appraisal or something like that, we've got to do it, but we need to do it in a constructive way so that we can move that person positive, not so we bring them down. That's part of being a manager and a supervisor, but we're not just discussing shortcomings for the sake of it in a gossipy sense, right? And let our virtues speak for ourselves. It's not trendy today to do that in the world of social media and everybody is in the I world and all and me, 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 me. But it's to calmly, quietly let our virtues speak for ourselves. Hard lesson, I think, to do for us. If we do some of these positive things, is there anything in it for us? Yes. More sanity. Look at the actual medical research outcomes of when we can, can, when we can trend more positive ourselves. Look at some of the positive benefits. Increased lifespan. I will take that one. A lower rate of the stress, please. Yes, I need that one. Greater resistance to the common cold. These are all medically proven. If we can truly garner more positivity in our reactions to things, Parker Stewart's here, who's a master of doing this, and I think he lives this very zen life for that, and I admire that. Better psychological well-being, reduced risk of cardiovascular disease. Whew, I need all of these. There's something in it for us. So it's about even though there's negativity in our workplace, we have to be the fountain, not the drain. We can't change that other person, but we can certainly change our reactions to it. Can we not? Because we want to have our calm. We do not want the turbulent waters of negativity. What can I answer for you guys? Give me any tips. Criticisms, you can say, this stinks, you've already tweeted that, okay, and that's fine. <laughs> that makes you feel better, that's a good thing. Thank you for being here on a warm, humid afternoon. Happy spring to all of you, thank you.